There are a plethora of handheld amateur radios out there already, from a myriad of manufacturers. Now, Ocean is launching another into the market, called the Q10H. With all of the choices already available, why another ham radio? What makes this one different from all the others? Well, uh, actually, Rick, this is a radio we've been working on for a long time with Ocean. So it's one we're pretty excited about. This this is going to be top of the line as far as amateur radios go, handheld amateur radios from Ocean. And um, I think the highlight of this radio, the biggest um, feature that everyone's going to love is the quad band. Quad band transmit and receive. So this this radio will transmit on two meter. It'll mm-hmm. transmit on 70 centimeter. Um, will transmit on six meter and 220. That is somewhat unique. Uh, that is some, somewhat unique. There aren't many handheld radios that will do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and of the ones that will, I think that this is, uh, I like to think this is the best. It, it adds a few things that everyone's gonna gonna love along with that. Like it's a fully waterproof IP67 radio. It's also, um, it supports USB-C charging. I like it already. Uh, th- those are big features that people have been asking for. Uh, it also has great battery life with a 3000 milliamp battery. Um, it has a GPS receiver, so it can it knows your location and it can transmit your location to other mm-hmm. Q-series radios from um, Ocean. 999 memory channels? Nah, that? that's nothing new, the 999 <laughs> memory channels. Which Ocean yep. handheld doesn't have 999 memory channels? But it has the seven NOAA weather channels. A lot of them do. Okay, oh, but not all of them do. That's a good one. The, the NOAA channels. Um, yeah. it, and it's not just NOAA like most amateur radios have. Yeah, th- this is a true NOAA mode uh, with this radio. It's similar to what we've done on some of the GMRS models. Most amateur radios out there um, will allow you to program in NOAA frequencies and assign them to a channel. But... Um, This goes a little further. You can assign weather mode to a side key and then boom, you're in weather mode. It remembers the last weather channel you've you've selected. So it's just a a quick access to weather. And it also um, has a weather alert mode. And it's probably the most customizable amateur radio on the market as far as what kind of alerts it will allow you to use Mm -hmm. um, when there's a NOAA alert. And it's not just a no alert. I mean, this has five different weather alert notifications. You can really customize it for, for this. And it's a lot like for those who are also GMRS users who are familiar with the way that the 935G works or the 935G Plus and, and a couple of the other radios that uh, are in the GMRS uh, service. Um, it uses the those same... Or it has those same features. Right. Some of the things it'll let you do is um, essentially it lets you decide what you want to do when Mm. it detects a NOAA alert. You can say to immediately tune to the weather channel and start playing the weather. Uh, You can have it uh, play a a siren, like an alarm sound, whenever it detects a NOAA alert to grab your attention. Um, You could have it strobe the flashlight when a NOAA alert is detected. Uh, you can have it strobe the flashlight and play a, a sound. Options like that, I think, um, add a lot to this radio. Yeah, that's definitely something that is somewhat unique to a lot of the ham handhelds. The GMRS users have been used to having some of these in the newer models, but I don't think a lot of the hams have had uh, that sort of feature set. In theirs. Yeah, not that I know of. I don't know of, of dedicated weather modes in mm-hmm. ham. Now, maybe some of the mainstream, uh, more mainstream, like ICOM, Yesu, the uh, Five big brands. weather alerts? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not know. as familiar with the um, those major manufacturers mm-hmm. as I am with some of the import manufacturers. But uh, I haven't seen this at all from any of the, the import type mm-hmm. um, products. Another big feature of this radio that I, I want to talk about is the programming. Mm-hmm. Um, this we have 
chosen to preload this radio with the most common simplex frequencies for all of the bands that it can transmit for. So, for example, right out of the box, it uh, has, uh, I don't know, goodness, there's probably 40 or 50 pre-programmed channels. And we've grouped them, like the channels one through four are the um, the national simplex frequency yeah. for each of the bands. Like um, the two meter is channel one, the 70 centimeters channel two, then six meter, then 220. And then it breaks into groups for the common simplex frequencies for each band. See, and, that's something I wish I had when I f- was first getting my ham tickets and I was still getting acclimated to, okay, what are the national the national simplex frequencies? Where where can I, which frequencies can I use to transmit on and receive right out of the gate? And all these radios were basically kind of open programming. You, you, they didn't really have any of that in there. And so I had to figure out, I had to go look up, Google up or, or look up what these frequencies were. And uh, then I would have to program them manually into the radio. I well, think that's been a longstanding uh, procedure for these. Well, most um, most radios come blank, mm-hmm. is my experience. You, you take it out of the box, there are no channels, and you have to immediately figure out how to connect it to a computer and program it with software, Yeah, which – As a ham, that should be part of the process. That should be something that you plan on figuring out. But I didn't really like, I've never liked that right out of the box, the radios aren't really functional. You have to know something to get it going. And uh, hopefully having these pre-programmed with all those channels make it a more accessible radio for new hams. Yeah. Because right out of the box, you, you buy two of these and you and your buddy can talk right away. You don't need to um, program it. Now, if you want to talk to your repeater or you know something like that, you're going to have to figure out how of to course. program yeah. it through the keypad or um, from a PC. But I, you know, I would like feedback from everyone that, that listens on if, if they think this was a good idea or not. Because I haven't seen it done before. Mm-hmm. And I thought it would be useful. So we, well, there may we, be a reason why it hasn't been done before, but yeah, maybe, uh, I guess maybe we'll there's find something. Out. <laughs> maybe there's something we don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Uh, uh, we we basically did a little research and figured out what the most commonly used simplex frequencies were in each band, and and just put them in there right out of the gate. You you, you don't have to keep them. You know, if you, no, if you don't no, you like can it. Wipe them out or change them over or clone them to another. That's another thing. As I recall, this radio, like some of the other. Uh, like the GMRS ocean radios, uh, you can clone the channel. So that makes it a lot easier to program. You know, you can clone the frequencies if you have, uh, say, the national simplex frequency, but you all want, you want to have it on a channel where you can add a, a tone or, or a DCS code to it or something like that. You can, you know, you don't want to disturb the original one. You can just kind of clone it over to whatever channel you want and make those changes there and you're good. Yeah, adding, removing channels, all of that is is just a piece of cake through this radio. You mentioned that it has the GPS location data display, and either it even displays like a little little gra- graphic representation of this on the screen too. In a certain yeah, mode. We, we probably need to be more specific about how the GPS works because a, a yeah. lot of handheld radios that do GPS, you know, there are differences in the way they work, and this one is no no uh, different in, when it comes to that. the The GPS it's compatible with other Q series radios, so if you have another GPS enabled radio, it's probably not going to work with. The Q series. And the way this radio works is it transmits your location. If you have that enabled, if you have mm-hmm. GPS can be disabled, enabled, you can even be turned on and off on a per channel basis. But if you've chosen to transmit your GPS location on a channel, what happens on the other radio is um, has like a, a map screen. Yeah, kind of a kind of a basic map. Yeah, it's it's not a terrain map. So you don't really see like you know mountains or rivers or anything like that. You see that's that's coming to version 2. <laughs> yeah. Your, your your current location is the center of the map and then you see like location indicators 
where right. other people that you've been in contact with are relative to you. And you can scroll through and see how far from you they are and uh, what you, you can tell what direction they are from you. Uh, it kind of reminds me of back in the day when you are when you were uh, playing Pong on the TV, you know. You got the little dots around in various places and move around. And you just don't have the paddles. Yeah, <laughs> perhaps you're right. But it's kind of similar to that, I guess. Um, the, the GPS works in coordination with the radio ID function. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you, you put in a radio ID and uh, then the radio that you're transmitting to will see – it will show on the map screen what your radio ID is, and then you'll see for that item in the list, for your radio ID, it's got an indicator number, and you'll know like uh, radio ID number one is right here on the map. Mm -hmm. And then as you transmit and update, your um, icon moves. But for uh, really for um, clarification, this really only works with uh, the Q series radio. Right. Uh, it. Yeah. I don't know if they use some kind of uh, open standard for GPS mm -hmm. or not. Um, I'm going to assume not because mm -hmm. the the information that we have is it works with other Q series radios, and uh, that's how we've tested it, and uh, it, it does work very well. You, and you it mentioned... doesn't require a cell phone. A lot of times, I've seen radios that. That get the GPS you from a cell phone. You have to work with a cell phone, like like the uh, VRN seventy five hundred or something like that. VRN seventy five hundred is yeah. a good example. The uh, Motorola T eight hundred is an mm -hmm. FRS radio that yeah. works similar. Like it connects Bluetooth to a right, phone, the T eight hundred, and uses the phone's um, GPS. This one, uh, the GPS receiver is built right into the radio. You don't need a, a cell phone app or anything like that, that 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 you have to pair up with the radio or anything like that. It's just it's pretty much all in the radio, built it right in. All in the radio. That's pretty cool. Uh, you mentioned the uh, USB-C charging port on this, which, uh, you know, we first saw on the uh, S-series radios uh, for GMRS and uh, the airband, the new airband radio and the CB radio and the, the business radios that are all in the S-series, right. which is a pretty cool feature, the USB-C port on the side. This has the same feature. It does. It is a U USB-C port for charging built right into the radio itself, not the battery. Um, the One of the things that people didn't like so much about the S-Series is that the port cover had a screw. Yeah. In order to maintain IP67, um, you have to put um, – it had to have a screw the way it was designed. And we sell rubber covers and we included a thumb screw to make it easier yeah. to remove that if people wanted to. But um, still, some people didn't like that it was a hard cover with a screw. With this one, uh, Ocean has fixed that and it is a rubber cover that is IP67. What they've got is a, a IP67 USB-C port itself yeah, it's in right, the radio. It's right there on the side of the radio there, you know, just uh, right there and on the, yeah. Very handy. Let's talk about the programmable side keys for a minute, since we're on some of the physical attributes of the radio, because uh, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, the programmable side keys are, I mean, they're important, but I yeah. don't think they're new. You know, they, they, well, they're, they're pretty they're, common at this point. In well, that. they're pretty common to some of the newer GMRS radios, like once again, like the S series radios and that sort of thing. But I've seen... Uh, a lot of the ham radios in the past, they'll have one or two programmable side keys, but once again, they are limited as to the functions that you can assign to them, and they're assigned different functions. This is a total game oh, changer you, here. You are right. We we did make it to where, as far as I we've been doing this with GMRS for a while, but right. um, with ham, you're right. This is the first... Um, I don't know if there's other import radios at least. I don't know of any others that really that really have it this configurable. First there, of all, there are there are three buttons here, and not just two, but there are three, and all of them are configurable. And as I recall, um, they're each that's right, configurable for two two buttons. side keys yep. and a top key are configurable, and they can all be assigned to any number of features. There's a, a long list of config configurable dual features. functions, I believe. Right. Yeah, they're they're all dual function. functions. Yeah, long and short press can be assigned. So tell me that 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 little Baofeng UV five R has something like that. I don't think so. I, I don't think it's that groundbreaking to do the the 
function keys being programmable. But I tell you what is groundbreaking. This is something we uh, we had Ocean do for this version of the radio. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the configurable push to talk keys. Yeah. That's, I was going to get to that, but uh, yeah. That's, now, now that's cool. What definitely. this radio has is two push to talk buttons, upper and lower. The primary push to talk or push to talk one, as mm -hmm. we refer to it, is the lower one. Push to talk two is the upper one. Mm -hmm. But right out of the box, push to talk one here is transmits on the primary active channel on the radio and the upper push to talk transmits on the non-active um, or secondary uh, area of the radio. Now, there are some people that would say, wait a minute, that's not unique either because there's at least one TYT radio that's done that, I believe, and maybe another Ocean or two uh, that had that ability. But this is uh, this is a little bit different because you can uh, you can program each of these to do other functions as yeah, well. Yeah, you, you have the option in the menu yeah. to choose what each push to talk does. Like you can say the top button always transmits on area A, mm -hmm. the bottom one always transmits on area B. You can also say uh, that when you press the push to talk button, it always transmits on the primary area in high power or in low power. Another thing is we've got four power modes on this radio. That's true. Low, medium, high, and ultra high. Ultra high. Ultra high. Wow. That's that's super high there, except it's ultra high. It's, it gives that's you a high. lot of, uh, of power flexibility. Gives you that uh, little extra boost when you need it. Yeah. That's kind of reminiscent of, uh, I think, um, doesn't didn't Midland have a, a radio or two? Doesn't Midland have a radio or two that you can do like a boost on the push to talk to get some extra power? If I'm, uh, I don't know if Midland. I think Cobra had that. Oh, it's Cobra. Point. Okay. Yeah, mind. Cobra had a um, high power push to talk, and maybe Motorola also. You mm -hmm. know, talk about, but we're talking FRS radios. Yeah, that's true. This is a this is a ham radio with this ability, and that's uh, that makes it different. That makes it uh, unique. Um, um, should we get to the big news? It, it's super sure. heterodyne, Rick. It's, it's super het. Oh head. boy. Uh, we we get asked a lot, head. like, yeah. is it is this radio super heterodyne? This one is um is super heterodyne and it has similar to the nine series, the KGUV nine D, KGUV nine P. Um, this has uh, it's super heterodyne receivers, um, and also um it's simultaneous receive. You can mm -hmm. you can receive on both areas at the same time. It's like two radios in one. Not only that, but it also has crossband repeat capability in this as well. Crossband repeat, yes. So sir. that's, I mean, is this unique or is this unique? This is this is a pretty amazing radio here, I would say. And we're still not done yet. There's still a lot of other stuff in here. Is there that, more? Oh yeah, there's. But wait, there is more. Aside from some of the other standard stuff, like you'll have the wide narrow bandwidth uh, selectivity and the channel scans and the priority scans scan group support and and the group call all call select call and all that other stuff that a lot of hams are familiar with on a lot of their radios but you also have the standard non-standard ctcss and dcs uh, codes and the the ctcss scanning and dcs scanning right, capability scan. on that everyone loves that um yeah i mean you've got this thing's just chock full of all of the uh, I don't want to say they're the little features because to some people, some of those features that they specifically want in there, that's a big deal for them. 